would like to uh, first to uh, thank you, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Calandas, and uh, our chairman, Mr. Liras, for the, uh, their invitation. And uh, from the start, uh, let me uh, describe how the oil and gas exploration production business works. My, my presentation will focus uh, us, uh, because uh, my friends, my first uh, uh, two friends, Mr. Uh, Nicolau uh, and also Mr. Garcullas have uh, explained a lot of things, but I would like to go a little bit further. So, state and government have to attract oil companies in order to locate, discover and exploit oil and gas fields. Oil companies have to invest money in specific areas called licensing blocks or exploration blocks. Offshore exploration blocks are granted to oil companies through bid rounds, as uh, my friends have already, already uh, explained, uh, called licensing rounds. So successful builders, successful oil companies are granted exploration and production rights through oil and gas contracts. And uh, how you proceed to invest? You have first to acquire an exploration block, an offshore block, I will focus offshore. Then you have during seven or eight years to locate and discover oil and gas fields. If a discovery is made, if you are lucky, then you will have to develop and produce these fields. And after 25 to 35 years, you have to uh, abandon or restore the environment in your block. And uh, this is uh, in, uh, 1996, Picture. Uh, in 1996, four concession blocks were granted to international companies in Western Greece. Uh, the licensing round and executed on behalf of the state by Mrs. Teresa Fukianu, to do it chairman and CEO of Flow Energy. And these four concession contracts were signed in a record time period of 16 months. And uh, of course, our experience in flow energy includes participation also in several lessons in around abroad, Libya, Egypt, Albania, etc. <coughs> and uh, I would like first to answer to the uh, question of the organizer. Uh, is there any oil and gas in Greece? This is the first question. My first reaction to our experience is that uh, a country Possess, possess oil and gas resources if contractual terms between oil companies and the state can allow these resources to be suitably recovered. This is a very important point, but I will go, go to details now. You see here a map of uh, <coughs> East Mediterranean. You have uh, a map, you, have, you see a map here, the, gas field in red and then you see also some of the oil fields in green and uh, which is important to say that as uh, was shown before uh, 500 square thousand square kilometers are uh, the uh, I would say the Greek offshore exclusive economic zone or continental shelf they are both the same this is the picture. And there is nothing inside. In 50 years, for 15 years, we are uh, drinking coffee in uh, bars. Nothing had happened in Greece. We can't discuss this for one day, for a whole day, but just focus. And uh, there have been discoveries, as was mentioned before, between uh, uh, Italy and Albania. South Italy, offshore Libya, offshore Egypt, and offshore Cyprus and Israel. A lot of discoveries. And then, 
Greece, as the previous speaker have said, Greece remains a totally unexplored area in the offshore land. So, but in order to bring our discussion to more, I would say, accurate, to be more accurate, if we are speaking about reserves, reserves are only defined and discovered, they are discovered ones by dream, by wealth. This is the term reserves. And uh, this is what they are called book reserves. You can announce these reserves to the stock market. So you can just do business if you have wealth. But your geopolicy and your policy from the government side of the, your company side is not done only with wealth, but with undiscovered possible resources. And the term resources is what uh, the Prime Minister of Greece has employed to President Obama. He talked about resources and not about reserves. This is, I would like to, from my presentation, just to keep in mind this important point. And then, these are, are confirmed by analogy. As the Minister Nicolau said, you can only confirm possible reserves, or I mean expected reserves, it's also called resources, so they are not reserves, but expected reserves, so only by analogy. So, and this is, you can find nothing, you can find uh, much more. This is the point. And then, we can come to the East Mediterranean region and talk about resources and resources. For Lebanon, for example. In Lebanon, there is no wealth at all, nothing, but probably one trillion cubic meters has been already announced by the Prime Minister, by, by the Energy Minister of Lebanon. And also, for, also several companies have uh, said between 800 million to 1 trillion point two in this area. And also in the Israeli side, you have 1.5 of expected reserves, when a big part of what 800 million uh, cubic meters are uh, resources plus reserves. And which is very important to, to see here is that uh, in this area, in the year 2000, most of the Sianx who are saying this uh, area is bullshit, is, uh, you can find nothing there. So you, you see they have already expected uh, more than 1.5 trillion cubic meters. Then, in, uh, from Kretik in Cyprus, uh, they are saying that a maximum of 2 trillion cubic meters could be, the concerning resources and reserves could be, in the next 30 years, could be uh, found inside. So this is a view. And uh, let's come now to, and go to the Caspian area. You, 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 you'll see why I mentioned Caspian area. Uh, already a gas field has been found, the Chardonnay's gas field. Uh, the gas of Chardonnay will be conveyed with a pipeline of 3,440 kilometers to Greece and Italy through the Transatlantic pipeline. And uh, which is important to say is that the Chardonnay, which uh, just 100 kilometers from Baku, uh, you, this is a giant field with a surface of 250 square kilometers. Uh, Mr. Nicolau mentioned about the target with 400 square kilometers, but this is uh, offshore also, it's 250, it's a giant one. And, and you see that this, in uh, the geological ages, has been fitted by macrogamos. You see here a lot of macrogamos being above or around the, uh, the Shakhtar Islands. Then this is a picture of Margocanos. Uh, usually are huge batches of mud that are emitting 
uh, for millions of years sometimes, uh, methane, mainly methane. Um, some, some also sometimes heavier one, he heavier hydrocarbons, methane and so on. So, uh, they are emitting for million or more years, uh, and they are feeding the adjacent sedimentary rocks. And so, if you are lucky, there could be traps and then you could be found something. So, they are emitting usually, all the studies they are saying that the mean value is 300 billion cubic meters emissions every 100,000 years. So, let me see what happens in the Mediterranean. You have west of uh, Crete, Mavrocanus, south of Crete, and east of Crete, Mavrocanus. And uh, they are already mapped 80 Mavrocanus. And statistically, it seems that uh, in this area there are 1,000 Mavrocanus to be encountered in the future. So, in uh, Gulf of Artan, Antalya recently, there is also Mount Volcanos, Shell has got a concession for exploration production in the area. You have Mount Volcanos in uh, the uh, Nile Delta of Egypt. You have Mount Volcanos also in Cyprus. And these Mount Volcanos are located in the Block 7. And they have been marked. And also, uh, you see that uh, Total has signed two contracts in Block 10 and 11, which is very, very, uh, I would say, near to this macro -cannabis. Then, let's go in Greece. In Greece, you have the Ionian area. This has been described from, from Mr. Nicolau and also uh, Mr. Karakoujas mentioned. And also, uh, you have the GNC, of course. You have the Rodotus Basin, which is a very I would say in very, in very deep waters, but is one of the most, I would say, sedimentary and, uh, area of uh, one, I, I would say, unique in the world. There are 15 to 16 kilometers of sediment in this area. And you have also the very complex area of South Crete, which is very complex. Nobody knows yet what happens there, but there are studies going on in this area. Just from one year, from two uh, petroleum institutes. This, their works will, will take three years. And, and some numbers have been advanced. And the Prime Minister was one of the first that has been informed on it. So you see the evaluation from two different, from the same area, from uh, the area from going from Cephalonia till the Rhodotus Basin, and you see what this diagram say, says. Uh, so then you have probability of having resources. This is certainty or uncertainty, and then underneath trillions cubic meters. But what this says says if you explore for 40 years, you could find nothing. You see that there is a possibility two, three, four, five percent to find nothing. But what this diagram said, uh, if you bet two, three percent or six percent, you find nothing. But if you go to fifty percent, the first impression of evaluation by analogies, there is no analogies in the Mediterranean. They have a world with analogies with three parts of the world that are similar to South Cape Area. And this you see that with 50% probability you can have between 0, 0.8 to 2.4. 2.4 is for geopolitical reasons. <coughs> this 2.4 can be chosen in, in June, sometime in June. And if you add the possible expected reserves in the GM, Ionian, and Eodotus Basin, you are up to 4.5 uh, trillion cubic meters. Probably you could find nothing or find something. But in one year and a half, so this will be published in one year and something ago, at the beginning, probably 2016. This was a view in a certain point of the study, just done. And then, 
should invest in grid exploration and production? This is another question that I would like to answer, is that uh, I would say yes, like my colleague said, we have to explore. I would say we can bring investment, but contractual terms between well companies and the state must allow both sides to conclude acceptable profits. This, if you have the right people, they can do this very easily. We know this job, we have been together in this job, but nobody asks us to come and help. And then, about the environment to invest. The European Union has already voted, I mean, accepted and ratified uh, the uh, vision of uh, Roadmap 2050, so the next 40 years. And this vision is based on Cyprus, Greece, Romania, Bulgaria, and Israel. And this, how this uh, roadmap says, uh, this text in the text is uh, uh, clearly, clearly mentioned that the next 40 years, EU energy security will be based mainly in Black Sea opportunities and investment, future investment for exploration production, and then also from this Mediterranean possibility. <coughs> so this is the first information for the companies that there is an environment to come. The second thing is infrastructure. We are expecting an infrastructure in Cyprus and uh, Israel. Infrastructure somewhere which is near to another country minimizes your cost. If you find a developer that your cost, the development cost is much less when you have infrastructure in the region. So, one trillion cubic meters have already have founded by drilling in the region. So, Aphrodite is here, and Tamar is already producing. Tamar is something now which is more than double from Aphrodite, as, as uh, I would say, uh, expected reserves. So, there has been a lot of discussion about the system. They, they have, some they have said, oh, the 7 trillion was, uh, was uh, too much, too much expectation. So, uh, now it's a failure, it's 4 trillion cubic meters only in Aphrodite. I would say the same word, this is bullshit. You see, noble energy has, in the stock market of New York, have shown the next, uh, uh, I would say, target. This is expected reserves. They are very near. This, you see, there are expectations into the block 12. This is block 12. There is not Cyprus, South Cyprus. This is block 12. So this is gas. This is myosin uh, leads, I mean, targets. And uh, let's go now to the last announcement of noble energy in the stock market about uh, unrisk reserves. Uh, you see Aphrodite here, the gas target, but underneath, just two kilometers underneath by drilling, you have to expect three times Prinos. Most probably, I mean, probability 50% for oil, 25% for oil plus gas, and 20% something uh, about gas alone. So all possibilities are underneath. And then it's not the only target into the block 12. Just see the, 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 map, the, the target marked already in this area. So there is 1.5 billion barrels expected only in the block 12, in the Mesozoic League. Uh, South Grid is not analogous like uh, uh, Dr. Nicolau said before, but most probably if there the is finding this level of Mesozoic level, probably we'll find analogies in South China. Probably. Then 
let's go up. I have to mention also the, the geological probability announced to the stock market because if you announce expected reserves without the geological probability, you are in 24 hours, you are in jail in, in the state. So you have to measure what is the geological probability. Is 20%? 20% is very high. Is the double, more than double, of the worldwide mean geological probability. So, uh, coming to production. And production in ultra deep, because ultra deep waters are more than 1500 meters. So here is 1600 meters, 1650. So you have subsea wells, there is no platform there, and you bring, you bring uh, by 150 dual pipelines, you bring this to the shallow, uh, shallower uh, areas nearby to Israel, you bring your production and you process your problem. So you, you bring it to the market of Israel or elsewhere. So, and which is very important to say. Sometimes we are speaking for you have to find it, develop uh, 10 years or something. There's no 10 years. If you are, if you make a good team of people, they know the job, you, go, you can go quickly. Just in discovery 2009. And first production 2013 in Tamar. Everything is ready. And uh, the project financing was executed through a contract. And uh, the consortium of, of uh, this uh, uh, bank consortium of 12 banks, the, the leader of, the, of this consortium was SNBC and Barclays. So, 4 billion has been already invested. And uh, which is very important to say that everything works unmanned. There is no value. Just with using umbilicals, flexible pipes, with uh, you can manage the subsea wells, their production, you can regulate their production, and also, uh, uh, which is very important, is to say that uh, everything is done remotely from the Tamar platform, which is very near to the shore. So, this is uh, what happens uh, in uh, 6,500. You make a infrastructure, I think Mr. Capulla mentioned, that uh, we can go to 2,000 uh, water depth, but if you want to go further, you can link this Tamar to deeper waters, mm -hmm. and then you are going go deeper and deeper, like, like in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, where there is 3,400 meters development, but you have to get, in order to, you have to link to infrastructure shallow. So, for, uh, all this job, and those, all of this financing, uh, through consortium of banks are done through the agreements. This has been already mentioned from my colleagues. And uh, there are two types of contracts. In Greece, we, fortunately, we have used the concession agreement. Unfortunately, Cyprus is a mess now because they are using production sharing agreement. Why is a mess? Because when the financing comes, the the a, a, a state which is a failure state, economically there is no very healthy, you have to guarantee more than 50% of your loan for the development in Cyprus. This is a problem, a great problem, a bureaucracy problem. A bureaucracy has been also mentioned before. So, fortunately the Greek state, and we were together here with my colleagues, we have also negotiated and executed and followed contracts uh, in the past and using the concession agreements. Agi was also a concession agreement. After with Dr. Nicolau, we have signed contracts uh, uh, over with four companies being a concession agreement also. So I think the environment is not very bad. People in Greece are, I would say, the problem. The right people. Uh, just now, I don't mention anything because uh, Dr. Nicolau and Mr. Calvides have mentioned about the, uh, the details of the contract uh, that could, uh, uh, the, the main uh, terms of the contract. But I would like to come to the tax. 
the tax is 25%. If you compare to other countries, I think 25% is acceptable, it is attractive to the companies. I would say it's okay. And then, which is very important, for 25 years, the company should be produce some billion of dollars. So, this net earnings have to split between the state and uh, the company. Uh, you see what happened in 20, 30 countries around the world about what get, uh, the, the, you see the, the government take, what the government take for the net, for the net profit of uh, the uh, production. In order to be attractive, more than Cyprus, more than Israel, more than Turkey, more than Egypt, our view is that uh, you have to have 60% for the state from the net earnings, I mean, or 40% 40 for the company, but for the ultra deep. It's not valid for what Mr. Nicolau mentioned, for the open door, for example, onshore. Onshore has to be different, for the shallow has to be different, but for the deep, the deep, ultra deep offshore, you have to have this value. It's a view that we can discuss much further. And then, at every, I would say, at every barrel, uh, which is 100 dollars the value, uh, the company has to have an eye around. For the ultra deep offshore, you can look around uh, and see the contracts in the world. Uh, you will find that the company, based on the risk, the risk is very important and the investment is very important. So they have to have an IRR expectation of more than, or equal or more to 20%. So, usually in the deep offshore, you have a production cost, a uh, development cost of $30, and the production cost of $20 in the 25 years, and then the state could get tax plus royalties of $30, and the company net take is about $20 per bar. So, I would like to conclude by saying that uh, Greece, Cyprus, Israel taxes is the only long term sustainable and you freely force to for development of oil and gas infrastructure in the whole East Mediterranean region. Based on oil and gas production infrastructure in Cyprus and Israel, Greece must attract soonest similar investors, join the broad effort and created synergies through its own oil and gas infrastructure and making the rest of the reserves of Cyprus and Israel more economic in the long, long run. A Greek lead oil and gas framework allows to create necessary conditions for attract oil and gas exploration production investors soonest, but using the right people for speaking the same language with the companies. And then, I, I would like to end my speech saying that uh, by unifying, unifying expected gas reserves in the region, EU energy security can be enhanced through forthcoming hydrocarbon extra possibilities, either by pipelines or sea maritime energy or CNG tanker transportation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Tomapalos. Uh, do we have questions from the floor? We have a lot of people in the room here who work in the tanker industry, so there's probably capital available, but not so much as an oil major, but uh, not oil expertise, but not subsurface expertise. So do you have any investment advice for somebody who works for a tanker company about if there's a way into free oil and gas? Uh, I think in the short run, energy tankers will be a priority, but in the long run, and we have discussed this uh, with Mr. Nicolau and Mr. Economides. Uh, we think that uh, CNG will be a great future because in the short distance, in the case of violence, it will be uh, to fit, uh, I mean, car, even cars for transportation or for, uh, I mean, uh, energy production will be in, after five years, it will be very, very interesting to, to look about uh, a fleet because 
CNG is also called floating pipeline. So uh, you have you can have every day people going on, and the cost from with the existing technology it seems in five years it would be one dollar uh, cost less. I mean to bring it less. Uh, I mean in the, in, in, to bring it to show uh, abroad would be one dollar less than LNG. So this is uh, a possibility for the future. Company wants to invest in exploration and production. Yes. I would add the FPSOs. Mm. Yeah. I would add FPSOs and FSOs for the offshore area, especially for the northwestern Ionians. One question with regard to this compressed natural gas. Does the gas need to be processed first before it goes into the, on the ship? This is a very delicate question. We don't have time to, uh, to go on it. It's not that uh, it happens in Tamar. Uh, the transportation of gas is a very delicate question. If you make a transportation for subsea wells, you have to transport water, gas, to the, and also liquids, because Offerdike, for example, has 10 million expected uh, also uh, gasoline, which is oil. So there is 10 million, so one, one billion dollars inside uh, available. So, like Mr. Nicolau said, they, in the PSO, you clean your gas, probably in Cyprus it will be the case, uh, because you invest less, you clean from the water, and then you bring to shore your gas. In the case of Tamar, you have to have glycol, uh, I would say it's a, it's a chemical, which from, from the shore, you have to bring this by umbilicals, by subsea uh, pipe, small pipes, I'll show uh, my slide an umbilical, you brought this to the well heads, subsea ones, you inject uh, glycol, the glycol comes uh, together with the gas with the water because he avoids the pipeline to be stuck from the presence of, uh, of hydrates, for called as solids, and hydrates can, can uh, I mean, stack your partner production, and uh, this could create billions of dollars of uh, losses. So, this is a very important factor to uh, have FSO and clean, which must secure. But in Tamar, they have invested more on this solution because time was very important. Tamar is an Egyptian thing. Uh, it's it's Israeli. 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 And but we, we could, if we're lucky, we could have similar things in Greece, but we have to, to explore. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Kalimatos from Leon Pedro. So, according to your opinion, you believe that the uh, uh, transportation of the, the gas that is going to be produced uh, it's better to be done with uh, ships rather than with uh, underwater pipelines. Uh, but uh, this uh, also needs a higher cost, doesn't it? So is it something that uh, the companies have taken into account? Or uh, is it something that uh, the government uh, has taken into account before making any plans? What do you think? This is, uh, of course, this is an important point. But pipeline. Uh, it's a pipe, usually they have to, to, to cross different countries. So first there has been an agreement, for example, between uh, Israel, Cyprus, Greece and Italy, for example. This uh, could take years. But from the other side, this time will, will uh, allow you to minimize cost, because technology advances very quickly. So, uh, I would say today, we could discuss about the presence of the pipeline, but the reserves, the expected reserves in Cyprus, Israel, and elsewhere, Lebanon, and elsewhere, in Greece, probably, uh, uh, these amounts of probably two, three trillion cannot be identified in hundreds of billions of dollars.
to, uh, to, uh, I mean, uh, to liquefy. So, to bring with two pipelines from Cyprus to, to, uh, to Italy, you will need probably 20 billion. But uh, this will take time. So, we, you have to wait for discoveries. Some of them will be liquefied. The other smaller ones, they are probably not a priority. They have to be linked. And then, after 10 years, probably, we would have the pipeline coming from there. But it's a question that we could discuss for one, two days. For Greece also, not only Cyprus? Uh, um, yes, of course, because it, I don't think the Greek market is interesting to bring uh, from a pipeline. You need to bring for, for, uh, for Greece and the Balkans, or the Greece and, and, and Italy, and, and Germany. And this is a point that uh, I don't think a uh, pipeline would be a uh, pipeline for Greece, no. Uh, I, will, uh, I will say it would be much easier to bring LNG in Greece or CNG later, but not pipeline for the moment. But we have to start making studies for it, to be ready. If a lot of discoveries is made, you cannot liquefy everything. So we have to be ready to create the pipeline. Some of the same Israeli they say half of Israel they are saying through Turkey or through, through, through Greece. But the problem is to have what is more secure and what is the cost also is very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you talked about uh, subsea wells, especially in Cyprus. Um, I'm afraid my knowledge about Cyprus operations is not very, <laughs> I'm not very well informed. But um, what about in Greece? I mean, does 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 a subsea bed is the same as in Cyprus? And the Cypriot operations in subsea wells, where they are at the moment? I mean, are they are they done? Will they be ready? Will they make them? where they are at the moment. Uh, when you have a discovery, you have to make a plan to develop and produce your field. Okay. Uh, if it's very deep, you, and uh, if you have a, a user, like Mr. Nicolau said, you, it would be a good solution to make a floating uh, unit, an FPSO that uh, would treat your gas or oil, and then bring this to the market uh, somewhere. If you are nearby Crete or nearby Cyprus, you make a pipeline and, and, uh, and uh, bring it to the shore. And which is, I would like to make a point on this, that if you find oil somewhere, the price is the same, 100 dollars per barrel, approximately. If you find gas, the near the gas is, the cheaper it is. This is a very important factor. So, uh, concerning the, uh, the uh, in case for gas, for example, for example, uh, you are, I would say, you mentioned the case of Greece. Okay. I think you have to explore to see if you have, and then have in mind that this deep. And um, my colleague said that it's very deep. I would say near everywhere. So either you find in a shallower place, make a construction and go deeper later, or you uh, uh, you have to make subsea wells where the technology exists. The technology is here. You have a, a subsea wells in 3,400 meters here from Mexico. Isolated one, but they exist. They are working very well. So this is technology. The technology is here. But it will be improved. The cost will be improving in five, ten years. It will be half the price. It will be very, very interesting because everything is automatic. Yeah, yeah. Everything works with robots. Robotic. Robotic. Yeah. Robotic. Robotic. Robotics. Robotics everywhere. Yes. yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Coronavirus.